Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Basil. Hi, I'm Z Garcia. What's up? I'm Sam. Welcome it's the top back. ten games of all time. These it's... are the ten best games <laughs> ever made. Ever. And another twenty games. All wow. right. So the. Yeah, that was a dig. No, I'm trying to think if there's any crossover between our top ten. There probably isn't. I, th I don't think so. Well, I mean, it's you possibly. Guys, well, you'll find out. You, can't, <laughs> you guys got to be wrong sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so a couple things. This seems to happen all the time, right? The difference, I think, between 1 and 10 is not that great. People put that much emphasis on it. I don't know about what you're talking about. No, I mean that. The difference that, between like, 1 and 2 is vast. No, nah, see, it's clue. not. It's a clue. I'm just kidding. Vast crystal caverns. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, okay, so the difference between, let's say I said one game's 83 or one game's 84, no one blinks. But if the game dropped from say position four to position five people are going to lose their minds and it's not that big of a deal i guess so yeah i'm trying yeah. to spread the i'm trying to get the groundwork here if right that, no, I see if that that's, something's afoot if that's the case y'all's mind's about to be blown <laughs> up <laughs> no, but but really okay if a game is in our top 10 period i really like it yeah i, I People well, like, if it's in our top 100, you really like it, right? I mean, right. That's, I'm just saying, as soon really as a game, boils down to, if it, well, if it's in my top 500, I if mean, it's really, in my top 800, if it's in my I'll top, see. if it's in my top 4,000, if I've ever played it, I like it. I love it. <laughs> that's a lie. That's a massive lie. All right. All righty. Uh, yes, I'm. We're moving stuff, getting ready for things today. Oh, I knew it. Knew somebody's going to comment about your thing. Yeah. Everybody, when we came into the studio, we were like, huh? Today is like Dress Down Tuesday or something like that? There's it's... a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> All right, so let's get started here with number 10. Number Alrighty. 10. <laughs> My number 10 was number 88 last year. It has risen quite a bit. That's a lot, yeah. Wait, we didn't talk about the... The like what we got coming and what's new and how many are new and how many are old. Yeah, I didn't want to talk about that. Okay, <laughs> my, my number uh, that's Feast for Odin. Mm. Feast for Odin Feast is for consistently Odin. growing for me. This is Rosenberg makes a new game every year, and every At year that one, game yeah. is sometimes great and sometimes okay. You, in fact, Z just told me you didn't like the one that came out this year. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, and the one that came out this year will not crack my top 100. A right called, it just won't. Mm -hmm. But Feast for Odin, love it. I love that whole patchwork thing. I love the gazillion choices. I think I like games with a gazillion choices. Hmm. So, yes. Someone, someone was pegging Feast for Odin for possibly being your number one. Are you I, read yeah, I read that no, somewhere. I read that somewhere. But I will say that it could easily switch with my number nine, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Feast for Odin, number 10. All right, my number 10 is... That's me, okay. <laughs> All right, well... Never mind! I'll hold that thought. You just were skipping your 10. They're too I, good for this list. You I get your so. own stream. All right, my number 10 was my number two last year. So yes, I now hate it. <laughs> So my number 10 is Oniram 2nd Edition. Ah, I made this come off your list. Uh, it's, it's dropping in about, I mean, at this rate, <laughs> in approximately 10 years, it will be forgotten. So, you know, okay. it's, it's coming. It there's, will rejoice the day. There's, there's still hope. There's hope, for sure. Well, you played it a ton in 2017. I've played it. Right, you played it a ton Yeah, I played a ton every year, actually. This is in probably top three most played games I've ever played. So you're you're starting to get tired of it is what That's that. got to be it. I mean, the game is great. And I do, again, it's a, it's a very little esoteric game. It's definitely not a game for everyone. You have to like solitaire games. You have to like little card games. It's got a bizarre theme. But everyone... Or, or at least a lot of people out there who have played it now that it's more popular and it's a, it's in its uh, second edition do often tell me that they really enjoy it. So give it a shot if you like those things. But yeah, Oniram, my new number 10. Can I go now? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. All right, my number 10. Actually, no. 
Hey, that's what you would have done. Is a new one to the list. I would have done it right now, too. Um, is a new one to the list. Brand new to the top 100. <gasps> Not just to, you know, it didn't just move up the list. It is splashing onto both feet forward. It <laughs> is the <laughs> new edition of Blood Bowl called Blitz Bowl. No, oh, really? Yes. Oh, yes. Blitz Bowl is... An amazingly fun game. Uh, I, I like Blood Bowl. Always did like Blood Bowl. But it just was, it felt too long for what it was. It felt too convoluted for what it was. Blitz Bowl nixes both of those minuses or strikes and just gives you a streamlined uh, go at it. It's a smaller board. You have fewer miniatures. And it, it brings the same feel that Blood Bowl mm. brings. But it's just compact, streamlined, and it's just much better. So my number 10 this year is Blitz Bowl, brand new from Games Workshop. I would not have guessed that at I all. haven't heard. I mean, I don't think I've heard about it very much. Really? Well, like from you, you haven't like, talked about it that. That's what I mean, from you, yeah. yeah. I got you. Well, this hasn't been you've been keeping on. it in his pocket. You won't like the game. You probably would like the game because you don't like Blood Bowl for the reasons that... I don't dislike Blood Bowl. I just think Blood Bowl feels dated. Yeah, well, this one doesn't. Oh, okay. I mean, it's it's basically the same me mechanisms, but it's it's smaller, it's more compact, and it it feels a little bit more fresh. All right. All right. Okay. Well, People's Choice number ten came for up from number twenty four last year. Okay. Uh, and that is Orleans. Orleans. Yeah, it just keeps moving up. This is one of those games. The DLP. southern person in me just wants to say it's Orleans, people. Come on. But it's pronounced Orleans. It's Orleans. <laughs> Orleans. I guess Anyhow, when, they, when they had New Orleans, they changed the pronunciation of it. Well, this yeah. bag-building game hit the list for the first time last year, and now has, I think it will be on for a while. Altiplano, I don't think will surplant it. I think Orleans will still Sur supplant it. Sorry. Stop. Orleans. Orleans. Supplant. Let's go to number nine. It shall not supplant it. Alright. My number nine could easily switch with my number ten. One day or I like one better. Even. Well, that's true. Uh, it was number three last year, uh, and that is La Havre. La Havre Feast oh, for Odin. Okay, okay, okay. They're my two favorite games. No, I'm not doing it again. No, no, no. I got enough garbage <laughs> for that. Now look, I like La Havre. <laughs> I like both of the games a lot, and it's what just that depends for? on the mood of it at any given point, you know. Why wouldn't they just call the game the harbor though? <laughs> Good night. Thanks, Sam. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. So, so far, Stop it. my first two of my top ten are both Euro games. Just, just pointing that out. Just pointing that out. If you want to let Tom know he hates Euro games, send he's, an he's email too. He's, he's just lying. He's doing it on purpose. It's all <laughs> yeah. married crash from here on out. Yep. From here I play on the out. Lahav with the uh, player elimination variant. Yes. All right. That's me. Uh, get that garbage out of there. All right, my number nine this year was my number nine last year. Damn. Deus. I really like Deus. It's a it's a solid, card-driven, area control kind of game. You are expanding. Beautiful. The more you do of the same thing, the better you get at doing that thing. By playing a new card, you might trigger four old cards. I like that a lot, that engine-building feel. And then there was an expansion... Uh, which is not new, I think. Actually, when it was 9 last time, that expansion already was out. That gave you literally as many cards as were in the base game again. You could play with a whole new deck, or you could mix and match different factions. I think it's a fantastic game. I really enjoy it. I love the simplicity of it, uh, turn to turn. But the strategies that develop always bring, to me anyway, those moments of you know drawing a new hand of cards and going, Ooh, yes, I get to trigger this. And then this card will be next over here. I could trigger this. And I could trigger that. You can trigger this, or you can trigger that. All right. What was anyway, it last year? Deus. Uh, what was it last year? Yeah. Nine. Nine. No, same number. Okay. He I made a big that. deal about that. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. What was my number nine? He wasn't listening. Don't look at the TV. <laughs> Let's go to Sam. All right, my number nine was number four last year, Blood and Bowl. it is Star Wars Rebellion. Um, it has slipped slightly, but only because it's a monster to get to the table. Again, I don't, I don't feel like it slipped really. Stop. I'm I mean, trying to <laughs> underplay 
there might be some changes coming up. <laughs> These things are important. Some of us have stayed up thinking about it. Will they change their number ones or possibly twos? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you were doing last night? <laughs> Star Wars Rebellion is absolutely Star Wars in a box. Um, if you want a complete, compact um, experience, a Star Wars experience, this is what you're looking for. It is a two-player game. can be played with four, but it's really a two-player game. It really does feel like Star Wars, though. For, so... Uh, this isn't, you're not going to be feeling like dog fights between X-Wings and, and, and uh, TIE Fighters. That's not it. This isn't just about ground combat like Imperial Assault might be. This is everything together in a complete package. The galactic struggle that Star Wars represents, that's what Star Wars Rebellion is. And so it is a, an amazing experience. It's very fun every time it hits the table. My number nine, Star Wars Rebellion. They should make like a, a sequel, 2.0, like based on the new trilogy. And then this time the Imperial Fleet's following the Rebel Fleet around the board. Mm -hmm. And ah. then you can turn your sh ship around and... Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd that be would cool. be cool. Is Yoda in it? Do you know what Yoda's last name is? No. Lehihu. That's such a bad joke. All right, my the people's choice. I got choice. it. No, I got it. It's okay. You did your job, but <laughs> I also want to jump. The people's choice has been on the top ten list for a very long time. It was five last year, two the year before that, so it's it's falling like a rock. <laughs> and that's Seven Wonders. If you remember, Seven Wonders Duel was number eleven. Okay. Seven Wonders is number nine. though. still managing it, but I'm I'm calling next year they switch. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hmm. Especially if, if oh uh, no, the new expansion came out for Seven Wonders though. Yeah, but I think if Seven Wonders Duel gets an expansion, Ooh. which they definitely should. I, I, the first expansion, I know you weren't, you weren't a big fan of it, but I loved it. I didn't it. dislike it. I just thought it was it added a little too much for me. I know I just said that after talking about Feast for Odin earlier, but... Yes, yes, no, that game needs an expansion, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I no, do want it, though. It needs, like, a two-player, a two-player... More like, work replacement spots. No, like, um, like, Tea Time for Odin or something like tea that. Tea Time for Odin? I still, <laughs> I still see seven... A duel for Odin. Speaking of Feast for Odin, someone told me the other day that it was a fair... It was the most thematic Viking game that there was. I was like, uh... Vikings were big into Tetris. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Seven Wonders, you're number nine. <laughs> All right. My number eight was not even on the list last year. So brand new. To the list. I don't care. It's good enough. Fight my number 10. Okay, so last year when we talked about our top 100, I said, I like this game more and more. I don't know why they make my top 100. I played it more, I liked it, then the expansion came out, and that Scythe. Hmm. Scythe is amazing. I, Scythe would have made my top 100. You're talking about the newest expansion? Without the Rise Fenris. of Fenris. Yeah. But with the Rise of Fenris, just shot up there. By the way, third Euro game in a row. Um, <laughs> Scythe is this, just, is... this is a hybrid. This is a hybrid. There's not really a... It is a hybrid. It's it, a game it's, and storage. Yes. Big enough. That's true. The new boxes, for sure. <laughs> Uh, and yes, I got. I bought the new box. The big old two halves and put everything in there thing. I think we're starting to see board gaming kind of reaching a, a point where we're, when you go to the store, you're just buying a box for a game. Oh my. Maybe that's too far. I've Maybe. done it twice now. There's Smash Up. <laughs> right. And if they make a King of Tokyo box, I'd be like, doo -doo, Marvel Legendary. I'd go in Dominion. I'd, yeah. You already wow. did. We have a problem. All right. Anyway. Really like Scythe, though. Ooh, this game wait, just shines at all player counts. Uh, I, I might even be talking to playing it with more than five, I think, actually, at this point. I haven't done it yet because I'm always afraid that that would make the game too long. But pff, I want the big player mat. I don't have that yet. I just, this game is fantastic. Also, it's all payment, too, which was nice of Vernon. Oh, really? Um, but I'd like, wow. again, it would have been my top 100. Maybe not my top 10 without Fenris, but with Fenris, easy jump. Side. I wish Vernon would paint my stuff for me. I wish you would paint my stuff for me. I Give wish I had stuff to be painted. Well, I wonder who could manage my time at work better. I wonder who that's directed at. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number eight. <laughs> it is me, yes. Okay, my number eight was my 32 last time. The more I play this, the more I like it, and there's a, the, there's a new, new expansion that 
came out after last time I did this, which was incredible. And this is Abyss. Abyss is my number eight. I ah, well, this is a nice change from your last two, because the last two were but ugly games. Finally, we have a pretty but one. But ugly games? Deus but and Oniram? No, both attractive, and <laughs> yeah. I've never heard complaints about their looks. Oniram? <laughs> Oniram is weird, funky artwork. Weird, yeah. funky, man. And then uh, Deus? Deus. Is Tell anyway, <laughs> Abyss. Yeah. It's a gorgeous game. Yeah, the new expansion was called Leviathan, and it is uh, it added combat as a real strategic part of the game. Before you had one of the clan, one of the groups, one of the types of people were soldiers anyway, but now it's an integral part of the game, and you are fighting off these leviathans, these monsters. That becomes a whole new uh, strategic decision in the game. It's fantastic. I like the game without that just fine. And the first expansion was pretty good, but this new one is unbelievable. If you like the game and you haven't gotten your hands on Leviathan, you got to get it. So Abyss, yeah, love it. Fantastic game. Scales really well for me. I like that a lot too, so um, just keeps on climbing. My number eight, Abyss. People's Choice has also climbed. It was number 13 last year, 15 years before that. I don't get to go. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, when you switch uh -huh. the order up, things, bad things happen. Maybe someone's bad trying to happen. skip your top 10. Number 8 scared for C'est Moi is... Oh, Leon? No. Oh, because you gave me a hint. Rum and Bones, Second yeah, Tide. Bones. Really? Rum and Bones, Second Tide. Wow. This was number seven last year, so nothing really happening as far as movement is concerned. Uh, this is probably, this is my favorite pirate game, that's for sure. That's um, good, because otherwise it would be like, ooh, what pirate know, right? game's in your what top six? coming up? But no, this is a, this is a great... Um, I guess it. I guess it could be considered a MOBA style game where you yeah. have heroes and then you have other, you know, kind of like peons that are tracking their own movement and that kind of thing. So, it's a great fun game. The 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 new factions that they've come out with or the changes to the factions. I love the uh, Viking faction that has come out. That's my favorite one by far, of course. But um, everything about this game is just fun to me. Uh, it's just a bunch of dice rolling. Uh, but it's a lot of really fun thematic type fights. You, you know, you when you play this game, this really does feel like something like you know you're you're in Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that, mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. you're acting out some of those big fighting scenes. And I just love that. It's a great thematic game, very fun, great bits and pieces and components. So uh, Rum and Bones Second Tide has found a home in my top ten probably forever. So since no, there's no, a, no, come on, since you know, there's a don't say nonsense game. like that. No, probably. I said probably. There's still a door. There's still probably a door Probably forever. That's, that's, I wouldn't say that about any of my top ten. You probably... I would say that about most of my top ten. These games are probably good. Probably. So since there's a Viking Maybe. faction in there, is this your favorite Viking game as well? Mm. <laughs> See what you did there. All I'm right. going to take that hook and throw it back. My number... Not mine. The People's Choice number eight was 13 last year, and 15 the year before that. It fits with themes theme of uh, games that look pretty bad, and that's Castles of Burgundy. Hmm. Oh, well, that's just unfair. What part? That it keeps climbing. <laughs> no, no, that's good. <laughs> now, Castle uh, of Burgundy. This one is one of those. You roll dice. You're using the dice to do things to fill up a grid. Very strategic. I don't play it as much because I really have a hard time with how it looks. Really? Yeah, I do. I want my games to look a little nice, but it's still a good game. Um, did not make my top. Actually, didn't make any of our top 100s. Mm -hmm. But it's. I think this is the highest felled we will see. Well, this is game. usually for. I mean, usually when I've heard people talk about, oh yeah, I like felled games, this and that. It seems to be the running favorite. It's Burgundy, and then there's like Bruges and, and Trajan. Like Trajan. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Games that look good are more fun to play. Period. I'm not I won't disagree that. with that, I think. I, I think that's a fair thing. All right, let's like, go to seven. Like Deus. All right, oh, my number seven is new to the list. Was not on the list last year, although I think I played it like right after the, the list last year. And also, this is not seven because seven's in the name. Seventh Continent. I love this game. This wasn't on your list last time? No, it because we had played yet. it. Or it was right around that time yeah. frame. Okay. So okay. I already made the list. Man, do I like this game. Mm -hmm, Storytelling mm -hmm. game. Now, I was hoping that this new Discovery game 
for discover. fantasy flight discover. discover. The discover would kind of scratch the same itch the seventh continent. I gave you an itch. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds Ew. gross, right? Yeah. yeah. Take everything back I've ever said. That's not okay. Z like discover. I thought it was thematic. Definitely. <laughs> the unique game concept within it is uh, captivating. All right. So anyway, now we're done with the lies. Seventh Continent. I like the storytelling in it. I'm looking forward to expansions being shipped soon, I think. With the, they have the above air. Where you can fly around a balloon type thing and an underground map type thing. So there's just more cars to go to do all oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought this could possibly supplant your number one. I thought, I thought you'd like to Your previous number one. <laughs> the one, the number, anyway, the, the one previously known as number one. Don't dig that hole. Anyway, we'll Seventh Continent, I really do like this one a lot, and it's my number seven. All right. My number seven was six last time, so no big change there. This is Ghost Stories. Ooh. Ghost Stories. Really? Is still Even with all these new co-ops? Yeah. I mean, a lot of them don't mix the... Kind of like the things that make this one stand out, which is great artwork, a challenge that is still, in my opinion, perfectly doable, and really, if you know what you're doing, you can win, and mechanically robust also. That's not, not a whole lot of Euro games are able to manage to give me all of those things, a game that has quick turns, but I feel like there's so many choices. I don't know, it's just, it's a good stew for me. It really works. <laughs> Put that on the back of the box. Mm, a good stew, stew for me. By the way, we need to pause here because this is like record breaking. We've never had 2,000 people watch one of our things before. Really? That's pretty cool. 2,000 uh, people are watching right now. 2,000. Like oh, no, silence. never mind. It won't be well, 2,000. No! But briefly, oh, it was there. As soon as you said that, as soon as you said it, people were like, oh, oh pfft. Pfft. deflate that bubble. Anyway. That's what happens when you talk about ghost stories. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Z. <laughs> yeah, they, they anyway, ghost stories, my number seven. He's almost done. Love it. All right, my number seven was number five last year. So, again, not that much slippage. <laughs> you don't on. like it now. I feel like that's what that uh, means. Zombicide, Black Plague, Slash, Green Horde. Um, Ooh, and even the picture shows that. Yeah. What? And uh, the reason for that is that I like both of these very well. And I like Oryx uh, uh, also. So the the inclusion of Oryx just kind of bolstered the, the staying power of Zombicide Black Plague on uh, my top 10. Uh, I, I liked the medieval version of, of Black Plague and, and the Green Horde just kind of adds in that slight bit of fantastical stuff to the medieval thing that's there. Do you treat it almost like an expansion, though? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you can. I mean, I, you, you, it's a standalone, of course. You can yeah, play yeah. it as a standalone, and, and it's fine to do it that way. Uh, but you, it's, it, it really feels like a, a standalone expansion to Black Plague. It's, you, can, you can intersperse them normally as well. So, but yeah, I, I've, played a, I've played a huge game of it with my son and another gentleman uh, that had everything Drink that in for just a moment. He had everything for Black Plague and Green Horde. Gross. Um, and that was amazing. And it was all painted. Did he know all the rules like back and forth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and that just made the experience that much better because we didn't have to spend a lot of time. There's not a lot you know, of games I'll play with thinking everything about, at one time. Yeah, and it was just that. it was just a great time. We, we had like a whole team of uh, dwarves. Uh, okay. going at it and that was just really amazing it was a great time had a great time in, and uh, that just kind of solidified it uh, for me but Zombicide Black Plague slash Green Horde my number seven People's Choice number seven was 46 last year so now 46. they like it <laughs> no it wasn't even on the list before that just continually rising it's number one I think it's a on huge board game jump Geek. that's two leaps boom boom and that is Gloomhaven ah and so just continue to rising obviously people are Loving this game still. I would imagine it will continue to rise, especially with an expansion around the corner, adding there's more stuff. an expansion stuff. coming to this? Yeah, it, more It scenarios. definitely needed one. Yeah, I, I feel like there's not enough in the game. <laughs> wow. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is going to be talked about later. Gloomhaven. You have a disease. That's, <laughs> that's, the, name of, that that's mean? the name of the expansion. <laughs> you have uh, a sickness. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, uh, people's Choice, number seven, Gloomhaven. All right, my number six has been on the list for a very many years. Very many, huh? And that very is, many. last year was number four. 
So about the same. Summoner Wars. Summoner Wars. You Man. know, Plat Hat keeps trying to outdo themselves every year. They come out with a new That's true. Crystal Clans and a new whatever, and they just... These are not bad games they're coming out, but right. they set the bar really high with this first one. I've yet to play one of these. We play these two-player games consistently. I've yet to play one that's as good as Summoner Wars and just right out of the box, that, that feeling. I still remember the first time I got that little card game, and I was like, oh, folding mat, I hated that. You mm -hmm. fold out a paper mat, and it just worked so well. I, I really liked it on the spot. Mm. So, I like that so much too. for being cult of the new no, Summoner is, Wars. That is fun. Has been on the list for I think ten years now. So, is it ten years old? It's pretty yeah. close to ten years old. So that is That's my cool. number six. I spawned it on here. I oh, he forgot it. About, no, I've talked about it. It's somewhere. All right, my number six was my number twelve last time. Keeps on climbing, and I'm glad it climbed too because I made this list before the latest expansion. And it is my favorite expansion for the game. This is Imperial Settlers. Uh, what? Imperial Settlers. I can't even pretend there. Go on. They, that, that I like it? Oh, that it's I in your top you 10. I thought you liked 51st oh. State better than this. 51st though. State was 25. Yeah, but I thought you said you liked it better than Imperial. When you did that entry, I thought you said you liked it better than Imperial Settlers. Well, hang on. We're going to pause this live feed and go back and watch it. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> um, huh. No, they were they were closer last time. Okay. And now I guess I put a little space between them. They were 17 and 12 last time. They weren't getting along. But still along. in that order. They weren't getting along. But you know so now I've, uh, now I mean Imperial Soldiers has the support. That's part of it. Yeah. There's so many expansions for that, and it's a simpler play for the most part. But it's just great. It's a fantastic game. Like I said, the new one, the Amazons, incredible faction. Definitely give it a shot if uh, if you like the base game. But yeah, engine building. Fun, engaging, lots going on, but it's all cards and uh, just keeps me, you know, my, I can put my head down in that game and then 90 minutes later come out and I feel like no time went by. I love that. Few games do that for me. So Imperial Settlers, my number six. Okay. My number six was number six last year. So uh, it's just kind of it. sitting there watching everything fly around it. It's uh, pretty interesting. Um, but uh, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong is uh, my number six. And what solidified it for me this year was the addition of Undercover Allies, the uh, expansion that just came out last, I, last year. Yeah, you, we did it right after the top yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that really solidified it for me. Uh, it This is one of the games that, you know, usually we talk about when you play games and you can't play it with its maximum, you can't play that game with its maximum player count. Right. If you do, it's crazy, it's too long, it's convoluted, there's too much going on. This is a game that you need to play it with as many people as possible so that you get the full flavor of the game uh, with each round, each bite. Uh, because mm -hmm. the more people that you add to the game, the more of those special roles can be added and the more... Spices. Spices, yeah, there you go. The Keep more, it going. Keep no. it going. I'm hungry. <laughs> Put in some cubes. Um, I'm dropping some miniatures. So mm. that's what I really like about the game. You can add more people. It almost gives it a party game feel to it, mm -hmm. is like, that you add more to it. Like it, a dessert. The, <laughs> I'm sorry I went down that path. I'm apologize. sorry you went down that path, too. Um, but uh, Deception Murder in Hong Kong is, is just a, is simply a great experience and every time it hits the table, with the exception of a few times at youth group, because half the group wasn't really into it, um, it really does shine every time it hits the table. So uh, my number six, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. There you have it. Fantastic pick. My 22. All right. The People's Choice number six was two last year. One the year before that. One the year before that. One the year before that. And one the year before that. <laughs> it's dropped by five spots. That's, that's, that's the game is done. What is it? Pandemic. Ha <laughs> ha! It's dropped on your list too. I'm calling. Big it. deal. Big deal, though. I'm what does it matter? I mean, Pandemic it. is is a fine game, and it's it it's it's probably brought more people into hobby than any other game in the last twenty years, other than maybe Code Names. No, I don't think Code Names is bringing people into hobby. I don't think so either. Maybe that's a good. That's an interesting idea, but definitely, I would say Pandemic is top three easy new people into the hobby. Oh, yeah. sure. If anything, it, it is solely responsible for the current craze of cooperative games. Yeah, yeah I would, it was I would the say one that, yes. It's the one that made the biggest push for more of those kinds of games, yes. All right, so that's your number six. I'm, I'm disappointed, heartbroken, and... Uh, Pandemic. Really, I can't trust people. You're no longer the voice of the people. <laughs> All right, 
So let me lay some groundwork here. Oh, here we oh. go. Oh, <laughs> get the bubble cord. Get the bubble cord. All right. No, 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 no. I did it. Number five is new to my list. It's new to your list. Yeah, but. Wait, you had a number five? Never, never mind. I didn't put it on my list last year, and I said I didn't put it on my list. This is not a game, but it's a whole genre. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, wait. Uh, it's uh, Lock the Place, uh, Unlock, uh, Escape the House things. Yes, Exit. <laughs> Exit here. Those yes, games. But very good. Yes, the es escape room I'm games. I'm very eloquent today, as you can tell. I, I felt, last year I didn't put them on my list. I said they're not really games or like experiences for me, but I, I treat them like games every, in every other ass in, instance, so I need to put them in my top 100. You and really do. They I'm really, glad you corrected that mistake. <laughs> thank you. I really like them that much, but I can't like say this one is, I didn't want to like fill the whole list, you know, number six, 16. So basically, is, this is a whole category, is what you pick. It is. I mean, if I had to pick my favorite, it's the Exit Games. Cool. cool. Yeah, great. All right. Well, that justifies what I'm doing from here on so out. So you're, you're, <laughs> you're basically, there's four different games there that, that uh, Okay, cool. That's my favorite. Well, then why this... didn't you just say? Because I don't want to then put Dead Men on the Orient Express as my number 12. And you know what I mean? Oh, I don't hey, want the whole hey, list. it's all good. I'm not apologizing. This is a good idea. You should. Good? Yeah, your turn. Number five. My number five is every cooperative game <laughs> in existence. Ever made. We're talking, you know, <laughs> pandemic all the way down to... Um, Even those one versus all games. Oh, that's, that's in there, too. It's a big bucket. And everyone's invited. Yep. All right. No, my number five is a brand new game to the list. What? Well, hang on. Give us a clue. It's a drafting game. Paper Tales? Paper Tales is number five for me. Wow! <laughs> wow! It just keeps getting better, man. I mean, I just keep loving it. Um, the expansion. I don't. I don't know if you played the expansion. I have not played the expansion yet. I mean, again, if you didn't like the game, you're, you doesn't matter. You're not gonna like the expansion. But it has more cards. That game needed more cards, right? I mean, that's that's what you want. Any any of those kinds of games where you're making combos, you want more cards. More cards. It's got a fantastic solo mode built into it. Many more possibilities now for scoring or going different avenues. It's got more buildings, and that opens up the uh, the possibilities tremendously. I just love it. Excuse me. <coughs> I'll drink to that. It's too good. It's too good, this game. I won't drink to it. Mm. I'm thinking about playing, playing Paper Tales right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my number five favorite tales. I would certainly recommend it uh, if you like uh, Seven Wonders. I like it. I'm, game. I'm surprised that's in your top ten. That's that's pretty high. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So there you go. That's my five. Sam also loves mm -mm. it. Mm -mm. All right, my number five was number seventy four last year. So this has rocketed to the top. Rocket. Um, Is it smaller than a ticket to ride box? No. Hmm. Is it larger than a bread box? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the bread box, the most used, it, that it word has, is most used in 20 questions. No one owns a bread box, but it's like, yeah. It has two necessary expansions. Is it Star wars -ian? No. Two necessary expansions. You should not play the game without these expansions. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Oh, Champions of Midgard. Champions of Midgard, that is correct. So um, this is your favorite Viking game. <laughs> All right. Okay, go ahead. Champions of Midgard is uh, probably the most thematic Euro-y Viking game that's out there. Hmm. Um, I like the fact that it has those hybrid elements where you are collecting resources to uh, buff up this part of your clan or that part of your clan, B purchase a boat so that you can go on expeditions. But then you have that combat dice rolling driven mm -hmm. part of going out on those expeditions and fighting those monsters and pillaging other lands and that type of thing. Then the expansions add in the more uh, bad guys that you can go fight that are up in the mountains. And then there's the Valhalla where you can actually uh, the, the guys that you that died in battle, you can actually use them to further uh, your, your point-making processes or what have you at the end of the game or during the course of the game. There's just so much really good stuff that's thematic, 
but yeah, it's still kind of Euro-y, but it's yeah. thematic, and that's really cool, because usually Euro games don't get that thematic treatment. This one definitely has it, and that's what I like about it. So it's uh, Champions of Midgard with uh, the Great Mountains and Valhalla. you got to have those two, and that's my number five. I don't know that you have to have the mountains. Well, that would be the one that I would uh, leave out because the only thing it really adds is more people to go fight. I'm actually liking it better because it does give you more spots to go for sure. Yeah. Right. Which helps a lot, but I don't know that I would say it's necessary. No, Valhalla, but... Valhalla, though. Valhalla is... Because the problem was, with, for me anyway, uh, before when you would play, you would build up all these armies and build up and build up and then go fight and get slaughtered. Yeah. It was a major... It felt, anyway, like a major setback, you know, deflating kind mm -hmm. of feeling. Yeah, it was kind getting, of a setback. Getting the, the their souls or whatever now and trading that in for something else. Yeah. I, really I, cool. I, I agree there with the Valhalla one, at least, yeah. All right. The People's Choice number five was number three last year, so around the same spot, but it's now ahead of, of pandemic, pandemic yes. which makes it what? Pandemic Legacy. That's two pandemics in the People's back Choice tab. Back to back? Yeah, back to back. Yeah, and your faces. Oh, Whose I like faces? I, I helped develop. <laughs> you didn't know this? Pandemic Legacy should... I came up with the glue which holds together the It is the best version of Pandemic that you can play. That's my opinion. I just, I, I agree. I agree. I also... All right, let's move on. <laughs> All right, my number four was number 10 last year, so it's moved up quite a bit. Um, this game is another Euro game. Uh, and it's, well, I guess this makes like it... like a Euro gamer all of a sudden. This makes mm -hmm. it my favorite Euro game. It's the highest Euro game mm -hmm. on my list. Um, and that is Viticulture. Yeah, I still like it a lot. What was it last year? It was number 10. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, every time I play this game, and I've been told that I'm not supposed to say I don't know what to buy anymore because apparently Viticulture is no longer sold and the essential Viticulture is just Viticulture. Got it. So, so we, we're old. So that so joke and thing that we've gone through is no now. longer okay, there. Great. So Viti Culture is worth it, but you really should get Tuscany, the expansion. The essential edition. And also Viti Culture with the Mamas and the Papas. That's in Viti Culture now. Yes. But if you can find a copy of the old one, <laughs> don't buy it. He's messing it up. All right. <laughs> anyway, Viti Culture, I, I just, this game... There was a, at our last Tuesday night game night, two different groups were playing it. Which really? is pretty good for a game that didn't come out like in the last two months. Not right? at you all. Know? Yeah, not at all. Yeah, no, this game is, is uh, very, very solid. Also, we just passed 2,500? That's two records in one day? Arbitrary records, but yeah, sure. Those are... That's platinum or something, right? That's pl <laughs> yes, we just went platinum, yes. All right. My album is dropping. When we go plaid, that's when I'll get excited. Plaid. Yeah, that means Plaid Hats bought us and gives us free seminar worth stuff. I think. We, uh... It's a Spaceballs reference. Come What's on, your number guys. four? Okay, there we go. All right, my number four was 27 Plaid. last time. Uh, this is the one game I seem to be the only person who likes it. They just had it on sale, actually, at the website for the company. Deep discount. Deep oh, discount. No, no, Nyrim was already on the list. I know, but that's well, already a game. Like, you're the only person that talks that's about it. That's really. true, yes. No, this is actually a game you would not suspect that would like. Though, again, that's a misnomer because it's got a bunch of miniatures. It's a big, epic game. The Others. No. The Others is my number quattro. Really? No, I'm lying. Hit him with the real one. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious, though. It'll take a little bit of work with Derek to get that going, though. Uh, no, the others, yeah. I just Again, this is my favorite. Let's see. Let me double check before I start talking. <laughs> wow, there's, there's, there's my three favorite. other games. Come on. That's, that's why I'm checking. <laughs> this is my favorite miniatures game. This is my favorite all versus one game. This is... One of the most, like, theme-wise, I think it's up there. It's one of my favorite themes. It's everything. The game is, again, I, the main thing I dislike in miniatures games is getting lost in the minutia of little rules. There's too much. And so my turn ends and I go, oh, I forgot to take the extra token for this thing. I hate that in games. If that happens a few times, 
I feel like I'm checking out. I'm like, well, I keep missing things, and that bothers me. In this game, the mechanisms are streamlined enough where that doesn't happen, and if it does, it's minor. That's what I like about it. I get all this theme, kind of like you were talking about the, the you know, uh, Viking game. Mm -hmm. I get all this theme, all these awesome miniatures, but the mechanisms are sh streamlined. They're solid. I'm not missing stuff. That's fantastic. And all the all versus one thing, you can, you know, uh, it seems like the two sides can really fight and, and you know, it's going to be an interesting challenge. The only thing is you have to be careful that you're not uh, playing with uh, the good guys or not being uh, timid players. Because if you don't push your, your corruption up willingly, you'll feel like the game is not balanced. That's kind of an illusion because you're not throwing yourself into a fight, you know, by hurting yourself a little bit. Huh. Uh, the others, no cowards want That it. might be one of the reasons I don't like this game. Because you don't like You just yourself? articulated one of the reasons. Because good guys shouldn't have to corrupt themselves to be... To be uh, powerful, you yeah. mean? Yeah, I guess. I that's mean, you can that's call it something else. Disconnects. I guess. No, it's that's corruption. No, it's actually you got to uh, actually put like tentacle thingies on your. Well, you got tentacleized. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, I used to like this game until I played with Vernon. <laughs> Vernon d does do that up for gaming in general. Anyway, my number four, the others. <laughs> All right, my number four, brand spanking new to the list. Mm. Not Is just this the highest 10. new game. This is the highest new game, yes. I was trying just to figure out the next three instead yeah, of Yeah, I know. He doesn't really about care this. about what number four is. He's just no, 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 no. I'm not even thinking about the next three. I'm Does it have an it. IP? No. Is it from CMON? No. Emperor's 4? No. <laughs> okay, I'm out of clues. Come on, keep going. <laughs> is it, are there miniatures in it? Yes. Is it from Games Workshop? It is. Oh, it's that stupid. It's whoa, not stupid. <laughs> you take that back. What's it? What is it? Is it the Warhammer one the Underworlds? That one, yes. Shade Spire <laughs> or Night, Night Vault. Vault. My and every time I I say this, I have to stop myself from saying Warhammer Underwear um, because it's Warhammer Underworlds, and I always <laughs> the wear wants to just roll off my tongue. I Nobody was thinking that. But I'm just saying it's I something I have to stop me from doing. I was thinking Warhammer underwear. <laughs> Warhammer, think about it. That'd be cool. Now with extra like, support like, for my sauce. Like space, like space marine underoos. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that'd oh be cool. Now I cannot think about yeah. Warhammer underwear. See, All right. that's a, great. You ruined the game, GW, for you need to hit that market, baby. <laughs> what? <clears throat> I'd buy Space Marine Underwear for my kid. <laughs> no, they're going to get their 20. Oh, oh man. Okay, no, all right. Not, not all my right. older kids. Well, my sure, younger. why not? Space oh. Marine Underwoos and Warhammer <laughs> Underwear. Sisters of Battle Underwoos for my daughter. That would work. Okay, so by the, the people's choice, number four. I'm just saying, number four good. is Warhammer Underworlds, no, that's Shade Spire, or Night Vault. This is my favorite games workshop game. I guess I'll put it that way at this point because it has the rich thematic quality that all of the different factions bring with it. Each faction plays differently than the others. Uh, that's a really cool thing in my opinion. Uh, the way you play the game is very quick. Yeah. Turns are done very quickly. Games are done very quickly. Uh, you can turn around and, and play three out of, you know, two out of three, best two out of three for a game. And that's not you know, you're only talking about usually an hour, hour and a half with three games of, of Warhammer Underworlds. So uh, this is great. I, I really enjoy it. My number four, Shade Spire or Night Vault. Either one. Cool. All right. People's Choice number four was number four last year. They have decreed that the greatest Viking game of them all is Blood Rage. Hmm. Blood Rage stills going strong <laughs> for the People's Choice. No, this one again. Not looking at him. Every time we look at, like, when Simon comes out with their new big box games, like, I don't think Rising Sun will surpass Blood Rage uh, for, for people choice. Mm -hmm. Harumph. Okay. I like it better, but I mean, I think that Blood Rage just has that longevity. Um, longevity. Them, that too. Yeah. Yep. Staying power. I'm just going to say real short words. Yeah, it's probably safer. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I agree with you, I think. Um, Rising Sun's more divisive. All right. Ooh. Number four, Blood Rage for y'all. Yeah. 
Okay, so that, now we're at number three. I'd like to clarify again. Here we go. You keep setting up something, man. What's happening? No, I'm just I'm saying. I'm scared. I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest. I'm not sure what's happening. Moving around on this list is not as big of a deal when it's just a couple slots. It is to Blue us. Maven. Blue Maven's number three. That is correct. Blue Maven is number three. That's really good. Oh! <laughs> That's and crazy. This was your number one. You it's too different. He hasn't said Cosmic Encounter yet, so that means it's number either two. back up to number one. Or yeah, that's it's number, number two. two. Something new is number one. Something we've never heard so of. So he is cult of the new. <laughs> ah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know about it. Uh, anyway, it's uh, not even out yet. <laughs> now look, Blue Maven is fantastic. I know that this is gonna be like the thing everyone will talk. Oh, did you know it dropped? I told you. I told you. Good grief. Flash in the pan. That's right. Flash in the pan would mean if it was number one and then next year wasn't even on my 100 list. No, I'm sorry. No, Look, they dropped the two fan. spots. Yeah. But two <laughs> spots in the top 10. See, right? So, so I hate like it now. Four spots in the top 20. That's like eight spots in the top. Follow my math here in the top 30. You know, math. That's how that works. <laughs> you stick to your day job. Got it. <clears throat> Actually, well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of like... Wow, that was kind of morbid and dark. So you anyway, dark, you dark. Too I much really, Gloomhaven. Now, Gloomhaven is, is a great, fantastic game. It's great campaign game, and I like it so a lot. I still like it, okay. I still like it, all right. Yeah, Just they're... not as much as last year. Fine. That's the way you want to point it out. Quote this man. Gloomhaven <laughs> is fine. Not as fine as last year. That's Tom right. Vassal. <laughs> Go to your number four. <laughs> oh, number three. Number, oh, yeah, number, yes, three. number three for me was 15 last time. This is my favorite Euro game. It's from Katala. Five Tribes. Five Tribes is correct. You're yes. supposed to make it your number five. Come on now, get with this number five. No, 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 come on. That's, Mr. That's, Math. That's weak, that's weak. Ooh. Five Tribes is my favorite uh, Katala game. My favorite Euro game as well. It's one that this is my it's favorite. one of his heavier Katala games. As, uh, you know, as far as what he normally does is one of the heavier ones. But the mechanisms, everything going on in it, are really cool. I I just read someone who, like a you know a BGG report from someone, where they said, yeah, it's good. It's a fine Euro game, but too garish. It's basically they said it was too pretty. I'm like, that's wild. It's too garish. Garish, yeah. I mean, like, I know there's colors, but every Euro game has colors unless it's a Feldian game. Um, <laughs> Would you like to play black, brown, light brown, dark brown, tan, or naked, yeah. or beige? Um, beige. I don't. Yeah, I mean, it's a solid game. It's got a lot going on, and it's also bright and pretty. Yes, please, I will take that. I really find this game. Uh, Genies and palm trees. Engaging, uh, just kind of mesmerizing how many different paths you can go and that they are all viable. So, yes, five tribes. Happy it's getting support with expansions as well. My number three. This is my favorite Kapala right. game. Let's see if Sam's number three also Genies has an underwear and line. <laughs> Genies and palm trees and slaves and camels. Yeah, that works. That, we could do some. Yeah, maybe. Let's do it. All right, my number three. Was an underwear line. I don't know. Number three last year. You were consistent. I only remember your number one and two, so I don't remember what your number, number three, three was. You don't know what number three was? World War Two. Come on, man. Come on. Axes and allies and zombies. What? I said it wasn't <laughs> new to the list. <laughs> Memoir no. 44 is yeah. my number three. Memoir still 44. 44, though. Memoir is still 44. Yes. Okay. No, oh, there's that. I Memoir thought. 44. It's my number three. I should have been your... No, no, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not you. But... He didn't do it either. This is a war game. World Tour in a Box. It is just not a traditional war game that has a rule book that reads like a technical manual and has charts upon charts upon charts and you have to use tweezers to move your pieces around. A real game. It's a war game. It's just not one of those kinds of war games. And this is great because it brings that war game genre to the masses and not to a clustered group of individuals in the back Say it. of one of the rooms Say in it. a convention hall. <laughs> <laughs> Declare war upon it you. Is it is a war game. And, Weren't we um, by the war game stand at Origins this year? I don't, I don't know. No, it was right across the hall. There was like the war game society. 
And I there guess. was a. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I no, they. That, I'm not. I'm not downing that group. I'm just saying that Memoir 44 brings that genre to a larger group of people. But is it a war game? Yes. yes, it's a game about war. I don't understand how this is a difficult thing for people so to understand. So is chess. No, it's not. Chess is about war. There's horses. What war is it based on? Horses? It's based on uh, Castle Warvenstein. <laughs> Castle Warvenstein. What is that? Garbage was that? My uh, number three is Memoir 44. All right. <laughs> all right. You got it. The People's <laughs> Choice. <laughs> It's a new video game. The People's Choice number three was 22 last year. So this one has shot up, and they agree with me. Viticulture. That's really moved up. They agree with me. That's interesting why that's moved up. I'm telling you, it's, I think, the water distribution. Also, Stonemaier Games is extremely popular at this point. Did you just say water distribution? Why, wider. Wider. Yeah. Wider distribution. No, that's okay. true. That I think, in fact, I think Scythe sense. and Charterstone have helped to this. Right, because people are like, what else does he have? Yeah. And then people are like, would you like to play video culture? Like, about making wine? Then they play it. Then they hit the sauce, and suddenly, <laughs> bam! <laughs> Woo, top ten. I don't think that's how that works. Hit the sauce. <laughs> I mean, metaphorically speaking. You don't speaking. have to drink many culture wine to, to enjoy no, the game. No, of course not. I mean, like, you know, they, they thematically hit the sauce in the game. I bet you their <laughs> number of demos at their booth would dramatically go up if they offered that, though. Come demo they can game, only do that at Essen. You get a free glass of wine. Or it might attract the wrong crowd. <laughs> you got, this isn't <laughs> like Cards Against Humanity at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's move to number twos. Bow. All right, my number two has been on my list for a really, really long time. It was number two last year, Cosmic Encounter. Really enjoy so this game. game. That is his number one this year. <laughs> he is Cold of the New. I'm not Cold of the New, actually, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, Cosmic Encounter, fantastic negotiation game. This, I feel like right now, is the longest stretch of my life not having played Cosmic for like a long time. I don't, I've only played it like two or three times this year as opposed to like normally I play six really? or seven. Yeah, I'm Sad. really jonesing to play. I know. You wanna um, try it? You wanna play it? He's jonesing. With, with friends. He's, ooh. I'm glad it's your number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, me, let, me, let me help you with that. Speaking of Cult of the New, we just hit 3,000. Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's three records in one day. Yeah, everybody wants to know what your number one is. That's what That's it right. is. The news is spreading like wildfire. <laughs> yep. Did y'all know Tom Vazzo has a new number one? No! <laughs> Servers go down, buildings catch on fire. General Zod is coming. Prepare yourselves. Oh, baby. So my number two, Kyle. We need a world engine up in here. All right. What's happening? Is it me? Yes, I it think is. so. Okay. I mean, it might as well be. It might as well be. My number two isn't nearly as exciting, but it was my 24 last year. So that's a serious climb. This is... Pandemic is even on his list. Huh? It Wait, might not my... be. This is my number two. I said, uh, this is Arkham Horror, the card game. Oh. It's my number two oh, game. There's there. I'm going to go on record that there's a really good chance this will be your number one next year. You really like it. And you, you Why made this be list. Why would one this year, though? No, because he made this list like two months ago. I made and, it a while ago, yeah. And it's he's like, he's enjoying it even more since then. I am. Again, the yeah, support is I'm incredible. I'm really I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed by this game. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely my favorite. Uh, well, he liked this that. game so much. He liked this game so much. He went and got Arkham Horror Third Edition and played it. Yeah. And liked it. Yeah, but you would not have done that, I think, a couple of years ago. No. Maybe, but I heard that some of the mechanisms were inspired by this. Right, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. I could see this becoming my number one, sure. It's not, but... <laughs> well, obviously. Well, There's again, I think, there. I think Tom is convincing me that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter that much. So what if Gloomhaven is three? Yeah. It doesn't matter that much. You know, it's all right. I mean, I'm going to go burn my copy of it. It's not worthless. <laughs> anyway, Arkham Horror, the card game, great storytelling. You can play solo. You can play, uh, you know, with two players out of one core box. Yes, it's a money sink. I know that. But when it comes to collectible card games, matching that up with solid mechanisms, but a great storytelling engine as well, the Cthulhu mythos, throw that in there. I mean, all of it just works well together for me. It's hard to get into at first. There's a lot of mechanisms and all that. But, man, this game just... 
And if they keep that support going like they have been, I'm going to be a fan for a long time, yeah. Anyway, that's my number two, Arkham Horror, the card game. <clears throat> you know how when you make a steak for yourself at home and you don't really know the right kind of sauces to marinate it in, you don't know exactly how long to cook it, Gordon you Ramsay ex- told me. You don't know hungry. exactly how to, you know, how much heat. You know, you just... I mean, steak for lunch. There's just not as much good. I mean, it's still good. It's still a steak. It's still delicious. It's still juicy. But when you go to a restaurant that specializes in steaks, mm-hmm. and the chef in the back just knows what he's doing, and he knows to trim this off. And so then, Orleans. And to, no, and to uh, add it, add, you know, no, to let it soak in that marinade and, and to uh, do, it's just better at a steakhouse. I would say so. Yeah. Well, my number two. Did someone challenge you to do the longest intro ever for no, a game? My number oh. two is a steak that has been made at one of those steakhouses. And it's the fourth time that they've made this steak. So Twilight Inferium 4 is my number two. Sound like you said Twilight Inferium, which I would agree no, with. Imperium. Twilight. <laughs> oh, that's <Twilight>. amazing. <laughs> Stolen. I'm claiming that. Twilight Inferium. You can't use it until you play it. Uh, Twilight Imperium 4 Fine. is just like that. Twilight Imperium 3 was great. It's a but great steak. It's, it's a great. Of the new. No, it's not. Cold of the new. It is not new. It's well, it's new. technically new, but there you go. it's still. It's like you've never tasted meat before. No, it's not it at <laughs> all. This is a steak with. <laughs> With Twilight Imperium 4, the chefs at Fantasy Flight trimmed the fat. They used the right marinade. They uh, cooked it just right, and now they've made a a, a great game even better. And that's uh, why Twilight Imperium 4 is my number two. It uh, is just great. It's a great game. It's very thematic. Some of my most memorable experiences playing games in general have been fostered by this game. So... Uh, just love it a lot. It is a great epic space opera game, and it's amazing. It takes a long time to play, but like you said with one of your hour and a half games earlier, um, you sit down for five hours with this game, you look up five hours later, and you don't know that the Everyone's time is gone. gone. No, you don't know that the time <laughs> is gone. That's my number two. I Twilight love Twilight Imperium a lot. But I definitely know the time is gone when I'm done with the game. No, bit. not at the end of the game. At the end of the game, I always, every single game I've played, doesn't matter how long it took, I always think, how long has it been? And I look down and it's been six hours and I'm like, it did I not feel like, that way. Why is it dark? <laughs> well, I usually, pl- I usually play it at a convention hall where there's no windows, so <clears throat> that, that might help. Yeah, I guess. All right. People's Choice number two was six last year. Uh, moved up, and I would not be surprised if it moves to number one next year with just how popular this game is, and that Stronghold releases an expansion for it every two months, and that is Terraforming Mars. Oh, yeah. wow. Now, come on. It's, again, just by visual, seeing people play this, Yeah, I'm trying to think of a, a game meetup in the past several years that I haven't seen this game at least yeah. brought by somebody. Yeah. It gets yeah. played a lot. That's amazing. Wow, this game is popular. It's really popular, and and, and each expansion just yeah, that's the other makes thing. They it better. It seems like they haven't fumbled the mm-hmm. expansions. I haven't played the game or any of the expansions, but I think they could stop at this point. Honestly, <clears throat> what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I have two words for I'm you. I'm so- <laughs> Cha Ching. Consumerism. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I feel like the the game's pretty good right now. They released a, an amazing expansion, Prelude, and. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. <coughs> Shouldn't have even brought this up. Okay. What's wrong with you, man? We need more. All Terraforming right. moon. Let's go to number ones. All right, my number one. This is it. This is all there is to it. The rest of us, we're like, know, yeah, we yeah, know. everybody yeah. knows. Go. No, I just want to clarify that I made this list two months ago. So this was before. Cool. This already changed. No, 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 oh, no. okay. I'm saying that... That's what he's saying. Nothing in the past two months has affected me picking this as my number one. Okay. But people it. will think it has because of the Kickstarter and we played the game live. But I pick a game that I have the most fun playing at any oh, point in time. wow. It was number 12 last year. That's Project Elite. Oh, it, that's not what I was thinking. Okay. Oh, good. I don't know what you were thinking. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. This is your favorite game ever, huh? Yeah. Mm. Well, right now. 
Sure, which is it's going to change next year. It's gonna Maybe, next but I'm month. telling you, well, <laughs> it's been it's been constantly moving up. It was 21 the year before that, then 12, now one. I it's consistently climbed, and I'm telling you, like if you you could go watch that live game, that remember that was that game that was last 10 minutes where you were trying to get out, and me and Sam were blowing aliens away. I just I sat there and said I just can't think of any other game that gives me that high. Escape. When I'm, it's just those 10 minutes. Yeah, but Escape is not the same for uh, me that way. No, no, I'm I telling see you. Escape being your number one next year. <laughs> it's, it's his number one this year. No. If you if you take it like a good steak, you take that big old fat steak and you trim it. But but here, it. but the, the thing is this is and this is again, <laughs> I I picked Feel this. Feel like you're mocking me. I think this might be on my list no, next man. year. It has it will be in the top ten probably for sure because even I picked this Project Elite as the draw lab version. Right. I haven't even played with the finished, you know, Simon version and all that jazz. You know, when I see those miniatures for the final one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeesh. They're going to have to create a new number for this. <laughs> Negative, Negative one. One. All right. All right, it's me. My number one was number one last time. It's going to be number one next time. And then the year after that, things might change. But probably not. But maybe. <laughs> It's so boring, uh, my number one is Pandemic. Uh, wow. <clears throat> and this is, yes, yeah, some people online were basically saying, like, oh, is Z going to be a troll and put the top ten games as, like, Pandemic this one, Pandemic that one, Pandemic that? Or is he just making number one all of the Pandemics? I'm kind of doing the latter there. Yeah, this is a, a little bit of a catch-all for pan the Pandemic family. Now, some of those games aren't that amazing like the dice game is pretty good uh, uh, for me the one with the water uh, rising tide is all right i'm talking pandemic iberia uh, i'm talking the cthulhu one if you want something a little more loosey-goosey but with the pen with the cthulhu theme in there and of course the legacy one so the two legacy ones are spectacular experiences pick one of those you know what i mean but but it's hard to say Oh, Pandemic Legacy Season 1's my favorite game. Also, I probably won't play it again. I mean, that's like a weird thing. You know what I mean? To, to say that. So, yes, Pandemic. For me, still the original. It has a lot of expansions. But Iberia is incredible. It's the best spinoff so far. Yeah, but let me ask you this. You know, would you put Cthulhu <laughs> up there with those? I don't think Cthulhu's as good as the other ones. I don't think it's as good, but that one's... Pretty, I mean, I didn't like the Rising Tide one nearly as much. That one I wouldn't put up there. The okay, dice so game. just to clarify, this is Pandemic except for Rising Tide. And the dice game. And the dice game. Yeah. Um, and, pick, the, pick. and the virus one? No, that's not Pandemic. I mean, that's It has pandemic. the word yeah, Pandemic in pandemic. it. You said Pandemic Family, brother. That's, no, that's not a very That game is game. so well thought of that no one ever mentions it. Yes, correct. <laughs> Anyway, my number one. Well, it goes without the saying. The pandemic. Right. All right, my number one is Blood Rage. What does that have to do? Everybody say it together. Oh. Leading yeah. the choir, oh. man. Come did, on, now, man. let me ask you this. Did you think about TI4 and Blood Rage? I mean, is it close <clears> or <throat> no. is it an easy ch number one? No, Blood Rage hits the table much more often. And yeah, but you played TI4 more this year <laughs> than I think you've ever played before. No. Played it once. Oh, really? Yeah. It was such a long game. I, I played. He it, saw uh, you multiple <laughs> days playing I played, it. That I was played, one session. I played it once. No, I no, he did not. Uh, we played a six-player version. No, 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 no. We played. Was it six? Yeah, I think it was six. Yeah, uh, it was a six-player game, and it only took us about five hours. It only took us about five hours to play that game, I think. And Which it, is how long some of your Blood Rage games are starting to take. No, no. Uh, we started that game late, but that was a really, really fun game. Um, Blood Rage is by far uh, my favorite game. Uh, and the reason it is is because... Vikings! No. Um, I hurt. love the way the draft works in this game. And I love how the draft makes your clan different than everybody else's by the end of the game. Really, by the end of era one, mm -hmm. uh, age one, uh, you're, you're different than everybody else, and it just continues down that way. Um, I continue. I've played this game so many times now. Not as much as some of you people probably, but um, 
every single time I play this game, I'm still finding, I'm still seeing new combinations of, of cards, new combinations of this. I've never seen that happen before. I've never seen somebody pull that off as well as they pulled it off in this game. Uh, and that just continues to happen every single time I play the game. And I love it when a game does that because you never really know what to happen. And, and people keep saying, you know, the, the Loki strategy is unbeatable and that's not true. There are ways to beat the, the Loki strategy. I've actually had somebody say, well, why don't you make a video about how to beat the Loki strategy? And I'm like... Well, you don't want Sam making strategy videos. No, you don't because uh, I'm... No, that's not uh, me at all. But I just... There's just so much to this game. Uh, and I'm getting to the point where I, I don't like playing it without the Mystics. I don't like playing it without the Gods um, uh, because they add so much good stuff to the game. So I don't know what's going on over there. But anyway, that's my number one. You knew it was coming, Blood Rage. All right, people's <laughs> choice number one. Do you guys know what it is? It's not Pandemic. I know that much. Number one for the people's choice. Azul. It was number one last year. Oh, it was? Yeah, yeah you, I, I knew you guys thought it was remember. Pandemic last year. Azul was 16 last year. No, last year was Pandemic was two. It was one the year before that. Oh. It's slipping its line. This is the... This is the the game I see played at our, our meetup probably more than any other game other than Azul. Century Spice Road, did that already happen? Nah, it's a big game. It's a big game. It was, already, it was in my top ten. Nobody cares. Because that feast? No, Scythe. 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 That's yeah. number one. one. Yeah, you like That'd be Pandemic? I don't, see, I don't see Scythe being played that often. Nah, I see it played a lot. That Scythe. Is. That's ridiculous. Although I might see Terraforming Mars played more. I, like I said, they might pass each other. But Scythe, the, the Stonemeyer effect is strong. Yeah, no kidding. Well, actually, mostly just Scythe and Viticulture. His other games aren't played nearly as much. That's you, true. Euphoria. No, and, no, Euphoria. No, no, definitely and not. And Charterstone and such. Mm -hmm. I had three of his games in my top 100, though. That's pretty good. And two, two of my top 10 and the People's Choice. By the way, I like to point out, I, I, I'm taking his voice to the people. Because uh, he's not taking it. He's not just borrowing Actually, it. Actually, you both had one in the top taking ten, it. too. You both had oh, Blood oh, Rage and the Pandemic. Boss. You do what you want, man. All right. But anyway. Take my social security That's it. Number That's the top ten. We like to thank our sponsor for this show. This is Forbidden Games. Um, and if you want to watch, we played one of their games, Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. We played that earlier uh, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that game has done very well on Kickstarter. It has gotten all the stretch goals. So... If you want to get like the complete full everything game, you probably should because I got that Raccoon Tycoon. Remember that starting piece? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. That's big awesome. starting piece. So, <laughs> uh, thank you guys for what uh, for sponsoring the show, Forbidden Games. Whew! We did it. We did. That was the most people ever watched, and we did live. Hope you weren't disappointed, or not too much disappointed. Yeah. I don't I know. I think we had some surprises. Some, you know, uh, returning heavy hitters. I had the fewest surprises. You had New some... games. You had new games on the list. You had the most Tom, new games just, I think Tom, what he does is he though, takes the top ten from last time. That might be. Throws a couple of new ones in there, mixes them up, sees what happens. I don't even look at my list each year from the previous year. Do you? Yeah. I don't. No, no, no. After I'm done. To right. Them, but... Yeah, no, I try not to because I don't I mean, I, I usually remember what my top ten is. But I don't, I don't necessarily. I really. Really, I sit there and go. Memory. What was my one last year? My one. That's it. <laughs> and I think I remember that my two was uh, Onirim. I think, but that's it. The rest yeah. I didn't know. A fourth of my list was new. <clears throat> Twenty-five games. Yeah, well, uh, that's games. a lot. That's All a right. Lot. I'm gonna get you a crown that says King of the Cult of the New. No. That'd be no. cool. That'd be no. a cool no. title. King of the Cult of the New. I mean, out of it's like a tongue twister. Of, out of my. 10, there were only three new games in my top 10. That's still pretty good. I mean, I had two new ones. Well, Escape from well, I mean, really and one of them, one of them wasn't new to the list. It was just, it moved up. I Project Elite, huh? I've enjoyed this, though, because I've had a lot of games. Again, it was 12 last year, so this is not like some major stretch. And I really mm -hmm. like that game. I've been talking about it for a long time. I'm going to pick a new number one for next year. I'm not going to keep changing every year just to get ratings. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, you just want to change it. No, I just think my, my tastes flow and ebb. Ebb and flow. Flow, flebino. Either one, really. Can I say flebino? What are you doing? What does flebino mean? Picking a new top one. 
All right, what is it? Ooh, you'll have to wait till next year. <laughs> It's a good game, though. <laughs> All right. Hey, if you're going to PAX Unplugged this week, we'll be yeah. there. We'll actually be in Philadelphia tomorrow. So if you see a bunch of tough guys walking down the street. It's not us. Behind them, you might, <laughs> you might see us. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we following tough guys around? Well, they look tough. Let's find out where they're going. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do that. All right. If there's a cheesecake store. Look in there. And we're probably in these. At the counter. Look for the hat. I'll be up in the top corner of the of the store, like Kung Fu Panda. Don't judge me. <laughs> if you were in the top corner, I think I would be judging something. I'd be like, how how is that possible? That's exactly what Shifu said. <laughs> All righty, guys. Well, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Thanks, everybody. Sam Healy. Thanks for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. See you on the flip side. Yeah, I'm glad that's over. Whew. Wow, it's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> What's hot that hot? What was that? Yeah, Turn the air down! When you go out there, you'll realize. <laughs> I'm gonna load air. Well, congrats, man. That was a big, big, big show up. <laughs>